last one. Yeah. Last one. Can I ask, um, how important do you think sports education is in schools? Um, yeah, massively for, for disabled people, I think. I think it's different now, though, because um, I went to a disabled school, so I, I done a lot of sport. I didn't like it, to be honest, because I didn't feel like I was disabled, but um, back then it, it was different. But I think a lot of disabled kids now in mainstream schools struggle a little bit with, with school because some of the teachers don't know what to do um, with them if they're with able-bodied kids. Um, so it's people like me that go into schools and, or tell them to come to the academy to, to, to try and watch a racing or you know, just things like that. So yeah, it's massively important for, for disabled people to get into sport, I think. Thank you. And the same for me. Do the schools in town and they'll do that. Do they have the high schools that have good sports programs for the kids? Yeah, most of the schools in Kenya, uh, we have camps, and uh, sometimes when when it is holiday, when they close the school, like when they are on holiday, they can go to camp uh, for the, like a uh, couple of weeks, and they go back to school. Is that <coughs> multi-sport camps, or are you talking about train, running training camps? Just running? Yeah. Okay, but there's not a multi-sport program, there's not soccer and cricket and that sort of stuff for the kids in the school. No, we have footballs. Okay. Yeah. Okay, can, I, yeah. can I just add, I think it's absolutely vital. This, this country, um, for this country, we have 20% um, uh, of four to five year olds are overweight or obese and that rises to one in three, age nine to 10. And in London, those statistics are even worse. Um, so sport is hugely important for our health, our well-being. We've been talking about mental health. It's not only important for our physical health, but also our, our mental health. And anything that we can do to inspire kids to take part in sport, and uh, there are inspirational stories here, um, I have to say, I was in I-10 in Kenya, I think it was in 2013, and I had, I think, the misfortune, I'm going to use it as a term, to race the primary school kids over a two-mile course. Um, I've had about two and a half thousand kids, I think I was fourth last. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, that's the base that uh, Kenya has, it's why so, so many of the great athletes are now coming from Kenya. There is no reason um, uh, that Britain should be so far behind. Um, and uh, it is absolutely vital that sport becomes an intrinsic part of our children's everyday life. Yeah. Hugh, is that part of the reason why London does the um, what I call them, the kids races, the shorter races. Do you see that as inspiration for the for the young athletes? Well, we absolutely, I mean, Virgin Money giving mini London Marathon, that is 2,000 uh, kids from around the country. Um, there are kids from every single London borough. I'm delighted that uh, we've been introducing wheelchair racing into it, and we are getting record numbers of wheelchair kids, um, wheelchair racers taking part. So it is across age groups. There were three course records yesterday in, in the mini marathon. It's where David started. Um, and what could be more inspiring than um, running the last three miles of the London Marathon, finishing on that iconic finish uh, at, at Buckingham Palace on the Mall, and uh, you know the pillars of uh, why my father and John Disney founded it was to inspire um, uh, sports participation and the Virgin Money giving Mini London Marathon is absolutely part of that. There are loads of other initiatives that we have. We're announcing a new one on Friday that we are very, very excited about. Um, uh, but that's for Friday. Um, so absolutely a, a hugely important part. Jess. 
It's just a question for David. I just wondered, um, obviously your own plans are yet to um, sort of be fully thought out, um, but you spoke about being at the World Championships in terms of kind of as a, as a coach or a mentor and working with maybe one athlete in particular, but are you able to talk a bit more about your involvement there? Um, I'll be working in the background of a certain TV company um, and then um, I'm an ambassador for 2017 as well, so I'll be doing some stuff there. Uh, Coaching-wise, I won't be there as a coach. Well, I don't know where that comes from, but um, I'll be coaching some of my athletes in the academy, and hopefully they'll be selected for the World Championship. So they have got a busy period of, of track races coming up, um, uh, the Swiss Series and stuff like that. So. It's just to get them guys in the best shape possible for maybe selection for the World Championships. Daniel, for you, is the World Championships, getting selected for the World Championships team in your mind, is that important? I mean, I know you haven't run for Kenya yet, you know, and pulling on a Kenyan vest is so hard, it's very, very special to be selected for Kenya. Would you like to run in this summer in the World Championships? Yes, that is what I'm looking forward to do here in London. Uh, if I will be selected, uh, yeah, I can be very happy for that. Mary, what about you? Just, do you want to do a summer championships this year? First, I can say that uh, I have to go back home uh, after class and after the recovery, we will. Uh, See, um, we will talk uh, with my manager and we will see uh, where, we'll be, where we will be and also we have to wait for the Federation to, to say anything. I think they'll struggle to leave you out of the team this year. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> You're probably thinking anything's possible after last year. <clears throat> okay, final couple of questions, yes. <clears throat> Mary and Daniel, um, when did you first get quality coaching? Many schools in Kenya have many children running and you know doing well competitions and so on. But when did you? At what age did you actually get some quality coaching? Okay, for me, I got the quality coach after high school. During school time, my school lifetime, I was not having any coach. I was doing my training individually. But after school, I, when I joined the camp, uh, that is the time I started to be coached by my coach, who is called uh, Jason Potter. And uh, for more, I can thank him so much for giving me a good program. Because now we can see that uh, we are ending somewhere. Because if we can be able to <coughs> train like that and win a major marathon, so I can see we are ending somewhere to do more better in the years to come. Big worry. Hmm. Mary? Yeah, I think I started uh, uh, real coaching, uh, coaching in 2007. So hold on, when you were 25, you must have had some good coaching yeah. several years, many years before that. Yeah, first I had a Kenyan coach called uh, Philip Simai. He was, he was an athlete and as well as a coach. And I think the late uh, 2007, uh, I joined uh, Nicola Gabriela from Italy. And he coached me till 2014, I think. And from there, my uh, husband took over until now. Larry, last, last question, if that's okay, folks. <clears throat> okay, Mary, I'm gonna ask you the last question. This could be a hard one. <clears throat> so there's all this talk about uh, a two-hour marathon that some people think is a bit rubbish, but uh, some people find interesting. How fast do you think women can run the marathon? Can they run under 215? I, I think they never talked about the women. They don't, they consider only the guys. 
So, so we're going to ask you how the, how the women can So I don't have the answer for that because they never consider women, they only say it about men. I'm sorry. <laughs> On that note, I think we'll um, call it a close, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for the you. Great job once again. And for our champions, travel home safe. Thank you.